My name is Dominic Johnson Hill. Uh, I've been in Beijing now for nearly 19 years. Um, I came here as a backpacker in 1992, 93. One, two, three. What kept me here was opportunity. Um, and then after I learned the language and, and got to know the people, um, that was what really made me stay. Because uh, Beijing and Beijing is just some of the most fantastic people uh, in the world. Uh, I love this city. If you get to some of the uh, areas of Beijing, say for example the Forbidden City, it's actually quite empty. Um, but the hutongs are the living part of the city, it's the soul of the city. It's, it's quiet, as I say that, the bikes are going past. It's, uh, it's a great community um, and it's right in the middle of one of the biggest and most important capital cities in the world. Um, and you get to live like you're in a little village, so uh, for me it's ideal. This guy here uh, makes some of the finest snacks in Beijing. Uh, newfound wealth, he's got a car now. Hello. Uh, this guy's been making uh, Beijing's best snacks for the last uh, 20 years. This one is a particularly stodgy one. Nice deep fried vegetable ball, really appeals to a Brit like me. Thank you very much. These guys uh, are from out of town. Local um, migrant workers, I would say. I'm uh, having a game of cards in the sunshine. Do you want to ask him if he's from England? Mm. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he's not English. He's from Zhejiang. He's from Zhejiang. He's from Zhejiang province. So from out of town. Similar to me, I'm from England. I'm from England. Two people are from <laughs> We're going to go right now to the um, underground city, to the nuclear tunnels. Um, it's uh, only a stone's throw really actually from my shop, but uh, it's the sort of place that you wouldn't notice if you walk past it, you'd never think it was an entrance into an underground city. <laughs> here we are, entrance to the nuclear tunnels, secret entrance. You can see how thick the door is here which is actually lined with lead. The people that live here above the tunnel actually have set up their kitchen down here. So you can imagine the uh, crazy life that they lead, uh, living above nuclear tunnels and uh, using parts of the tunnels for part of their lives. So we've got a kitchen and uh, there's even a bathroom further on down where, which they use. So there you've got the first level of tunnels and then we go down here, which is actually the deepest section in this area. The tunnels are very, very short. You have to, so to be someone tall like myself would have to crouch down to walk through them. But these lower level of tunnels were reserved for really important people. Um, and so they're very high. And you can see again, some more beds and bicycles and being used for, for storing for the, for the local government here. So up these steps, um, I was told, there was the uh, office of a very important person. It was a bedroom and an office. And there's a little escape tunnel as well that takes you up to the surface. It's very, very interesting. So you come up here, there's a nice little cow there. You can see all the uh, great place for growing mushrooms, probably. So this is his own personal suite with escape tunnel. Very 007. This particular uh, section of the tunnels was built uh, around, started around 1969 and went on until 1972. They were built really, really quickly. Um, and um, just when things were going, all the relationships between China and Russia went, went sour, they just, Mao said, we're building an underground city. And, this is the result of that, um, and it's uh, it's huge. I mean, what what you're seeing today is a very small section, but it leads all over Beijing and goes all the way up to the north. They had drills where everybody would flood down here um, and 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 get ready for a, a nuclear attack. But there was never a, a nuclear war, so they were never used. It's uh, it's kind of spooky, actually. The reason why uh, they're being destroyed is. Well, they're, they're expanding the subway network around Beijing because they kind of get in the way. And also because um, essentially it's, uh, it's a, because they, they, they lead into so many people's homes and important places they need to, to seal them all off now. So it's a bit of a shame. It's uh, part of Beijing's history and uh, oh, it's nice that we get to film it before it all uh, disappears. <laughs> So uh, where are you taking us now, Damley? Right, well, I'm a man. 
I like my beer. And fortunately, a very enterprising young American chap has uh, started his own microbrewery just around the corner uh, from where I live. And um, so this is my regular, and it's really off the beaten track. I mean, it's, it's fairly new. Uh, it's the best beer in Beijing, if not the world. It really personifies Beijing, you know, uh, an entrepreneur who started his own business and puts a lot of heart and soul into it, and you just uh, feel at home here. It's fantastic. We're literally in the middle of 20 million people, and being in the hutongs makes you feel like you're in a small community in the countryside. You can see the stars at night. The people are amazing. You hear children laughing and playing in, in the alleyways. If bizarre wasn't such a negative word, I would say it's bizarre, but it's just so refreshing. Beijing is just a fascinating place. It's just culture and, and history everywhere. So uh, I feel very privileged to live here, really, and, and, and get to live amongst all this. Hey,